the uh, uh, um, Brenda asked before the service here that we could take uh, Corbin Gillespie off and then also uh, we need to add Wayne Gillespie he had hip surgery you say yesterday oh, yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Monday. Monday okay Monday and he's back home right okay All right. he was trying to keep it secret he said but she said she's gonna let it out say so. If Wayne's watching, that was not my idea to spoil your secrets. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, keep him in prayer. Uh, glad he's back home, and hopefully, it'll give him some relief there in his hips and some arthritis and stuff in your grandma's hand. Let's go over the uh, first line here Janet Akers, Tammy Akers, Willis and Sharon Akers, Larry Alvis, Beatrice Darnell, Loretta Austin, Dreama Bailey, Amy Baker. Dave Ballingy, Deborah Beasley, Amy Beckner, Hubie Belcher, Nancy Belcher, Mary Alice Belcher, Christopher Bennett, Alvy Blankenship, Carol Blankenship, Danny Bradley, Jean Bradley, Tommy Bradley, Patsy Broadus, Karen Brooks, David Brown, Janice Burroughs, Betty Burton, Debbie Cable, Robbie Campbell, Ronald Carroll, Howard Carter, Michael Carter, Randolph and Liz Carter, Larry Cobb, Carolyn Cody, Sheila Collins, April and C.A. Comer, Madeline Craig, Teresa Craig, Debbie Dalton, Diddle Dalton, David Davis, Phyllis uh, Deacon, Deacon De uh, Tina Dillon, Kathy Dixon, Dottie Duncan, Robert Dunn, Joanne Draval, Dottie uh, Edgar, uh, Don Everett, Madison Ferguson, Elaine Flint, Harvey Flint, Betty Garland, Casey Gillenwater, Norman and Becky Godsey, Harry Greco, <coughs> Bonnie Gano, Don Hanna, Susan Harden, Andy Hare, Patty Harper, Matt Harris, Greg Hatfield, Lou Hall, Clayton Helmick, uh, Judy Hines, Mike and Maxine Holgren, Jaden Holiday. Deborah Hollinsworth, Jerry Hollinsworth, Becky Hunter, Vaughn Hutchison, Rachel Jeffcoat, Stephanie Jennings, Cooper Jewell, Ellen Spanglin Johnson, Kelly Johnson, Mike Johnson, Brandon Jones, uh, Lee Kaufman, Gene King, and Joshua Keats. Uh, any updates on that first page? to come home Monday with hospice. That's Tommy. So continue to pray for Tommy and Mary. Also, on the, any other uh, addition or updates or deletion? Mike Johnson. What's that? Mike Johnson. Uh, Larry Johnson stopped by down there today and told me that Mike had got out of the hospital now. He's doing a lot better. He's still in uh, rehab. Okay. So you want to leave him on there? For yeah, I'll leave him on. Please, okay. yes. Yeah. Right now with Mike Johnson said so he's got to come home. He believes he wanted to continue. Any other dates? On uh, I got one there that uh, Joshua Keats. That's actually that's supposed to be Hunter Keats. I think it's right. Um, but anyhow, uh, he has cancer. He's a guy that uh, uh, fishes with us, and uh, they found somebody. I guess they can do bone marrow and do. Uh, stem cells through the bone marrow and they finally found somebody who's uh, um, their bone marrow would match up with his so, but he's got to spend I think he said 100 straight days at UVA in the hospital so he's 19 years old or something like that so they, actually he, he was diagnosed with cancer like a week after his mom had just passed away with cancer so anyway I said continue to pray for their family he actually messaged me this week and asked me he told me they just took him down so any, any others on the first page? Donna? Ask Howard Dillon, please. Howard Dillon? Yes. Okay. He's the brother to, to uh, Dwight Martin. His husband is, is the minister at Steinberg. Okay. And uh, they did a biopsy on him. I haven't heard the results of that, but he had gathering fluid on his lungs and they found some clots on his bones. Okay. And that's 
Howard Dillon and did a biopsy and uh, found some fluid on his lungs and uh, so I continue to keep him in prayer. Any others on purpose? Jan Bryan, Q-R-Y-A-N. You say Jim? Jan. Jan. Spell out last name. C R Y A N. C R Y A N. You said you had chemo? She had metastatic breast cancer and started chemo this week. Okay. She's not, it doesn't look good. Okay, so you continue to keep in prayer. She started, I can't even get that. <laughs> I'm going to let the doctor pronounce that one there, the big M, big M word, but the chemo. But yeah, keep him in prayer. It's not looking good, she says. So. Any others on the first page? All right, we'll do the second page. It's Jim Kelly, uh, John uh, Johnny Kerwin, Nicole Kidd, Cherie King, Nancy Klein, Leonard Sukolowski, Anita Lambert, uh, David Lambert, Marietta Lambert, Rhonda Lambert, uh, Irv- Irva Wall, Daryl and Barbara Lee, Danny Lester, Wade and Frida Lester, Wade Lester Jr., Rita Lewis, Cynthia Light, Eddie and Honey Long, Linda Long, Pam Long, Roger Long, Danny Lucas, Kathy Lucas, Bobby Martin, Trixie Martin, Mike and Judy McClanahan, Mary McGuire, Greg and Meadows, uh, Greg Meadows, Faith Mills, Zoe Mitchum, DJ Mullins, Penny Mullins, George Muncy, Eric Mutter, Ben Neal, uh, Diana Partlow, Roger Pence, Trish Phelps, Gina Porter, Burke Porterfield, Angela Ramsey, Don Richards, Lorraine Richards, uh, Bonnie Roberts, Pastor Jimmy Rogers, Dale Scott, Eddie uh, Simmons, Monica Schaefer, Brenda Shortridge, Annette Schieber, uh Nancy Sizemore, Sharon Smith, Frida Smoot, Betty Snyder, Cindy Snyder, Brenda Sowers, Ellie Spencer, Jesse Spencer, Tom Spencer, Kathy Spoils, Julie Stonacre, Mark Stonacre, Jack Sullivan, John Sullivan, Mike Tabor, Eddie Thomas, Cindy Thompson, David Waddell, Barbara Walkers, Bill Waters, John White, Mike White, Tabitha Witt, Larry Williams, Lorene Wright, Judy Young, and Natalie uh, Natalie Kay. All right, yeah, so it's good seeing uh, Shree back there. Stage. Huh? Jim Kelly there, he's, uh, he's back to work, so I guess he's catching off. I don't know. Like I said, that's oh, a good job. Yeah. 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 Jim, Jim Kelly is back home, but need to continue to pray for his salvation. Any other updates on the second page? Deletion? All right, how many unspoken do we have? Any of those? And also, don't forget, on the back there, we have our uh, missionaries, um, foreign Christian schools, uh, Ballard Christian uh, schools in Kashmir, uh, Baptist Home Schools in Jefferson, and Marietta Bible College is there at Christian schools to so continue to pray for them as they're about to get Christmas break, and I pray for our teachers and all that, and even our public schools and stuff that is get that midway point. So... Uh, Ready for a little break, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'm gonna call on the. I'm gonna ask him. Um, let's see here. Dave Bounds, if he will help us in prayer, and uh, ask the if he'll close us in prayer. Why you pray for those uh, names as well? If God puts in your heart. Father, thank you so much for this day. We just praise you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. The many blessings you've given us. We thank you, Father. This wonderful time of year, the Saints.
experience. <laughs> just watch those men. It's a hard time for them while, while they were struggling. Just ask that you be with them and strengthen them. Again, we pray that do then your will would be done. We thank you for everything that we're able to do here, Father. We just, we just give you the glory for all of it. We thank you, Father, for saving us, for forgiving us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord God, we are thankful. We want to show you. shelter over our head that keeps us dry for the warmth that we have at night that we don't have to go to bed trying to stay warm because the house is cold God we love you we thank you for each and every blessing and we pray for those that are not as blessed as much as we are we know there's so much chaos and sadness throughout this world and we know God that the only solution is within you and your name and through your blood God that was shed on Calvary to offer a plan of salvation so people could come home to be with you. For if I was, if all I had in this life was in the hope of this world, I'd be the one that in this misery. But thank you, God, that you loved us and saved us and you've got us a home in heaven. Forgive us for we're fair, Lord. There's so many times within myself and within the, the church body, within my family, Things can be going on and then things happen. Things happen and where somebody is not doing what they need to be doing. And I beg forgiveness for this, Lord. But we need to be finding our, our faith in your word and seeing what you have to tell us. And forgive us for not obeying. Lord, as we, we thank you for this church, for the outreach of the church and for each and every one that is represented here and for their needs, the spiritual needs, Lord, the physical needs, mental needs, financial needs. <clears throat> Lord, financial needs and, and mental needs, we need to be out having our mind set on you. We need to have our mind <clears throat> made up and consecrated within our hearts that we're going to serve you. If we're going to do right, we're going to and then depend upon you for everything that's within our lives, for you are our supply, Lord. God, we love you. Thank you for this church and for the body. Thank you, God, for loving us and saving us, and thank you for answered prayer. Just as Dave said about the names that's being able to be taken off of the answered prayer, and each and every one that we'll never fail to give you all the praise, honor, and glory, for it's you at work. God, help us to always obey your will. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, we've got the announcements here. Uh, so don't forget we've got our nursing home uh, is the second Monday at Stone Eyes and the third Tuesday of the month at Heritage Hall. So praise the Lord that we can now get back into those uh, uh, back into the nursing homes and there for a while they wasn't like anybody in and uh, then they had it where you know you have to have protocols and stuff and so we're thankful that we've been praying to get back in there that we've been able to get back into in the homes there and you know the people there appreciate that to be able to have somebody come in and preach and, and be able to uh, hear the gospel so um we got our parades coming up uh you know uh i didn't make it in Aaron was there and she was back home i uh I got home at like seven last night and she beat me home and I said wow you're done already and uh, um, so anyhow um, Rodney was telling me that there was 20, 20 plus people there last night and they had 1500 bags of candy stuffed with uh, a bag stuffed with candy and tracks in about uh, 45 minutes last night so I want to thank everybody for all your help for that. And, uh, you know, we've heard before, many hands make light work. And I couldn't believe it whenever I got back. And I was thinking, well, this thing didn't start till 6. And like I said, I got home at 7. And Aaron beat me back to the house. So uh, thank everybody for coming out and pitching in at everybody that gave candy as well. Uh, they, Aaron said they had plenty of candy. So <coughs> thank everybody for that. 
Uh, don't forget, if you haven't turned in your uh, faith promise, continue to be praying about that. The slips are back there in the back. Just pick them up, put them in the offering. But uh, anyhow, just continue to pray for that, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's what you, you need to do on that. So like I said, the slips are in the back, back there. And then uh, our prayers are, if you want to uh, do the float or walk along, <coughs> pass tracks out and uh stuff like that or ride the float uh, but they are going to be Saturday uh, is the ballot parade you're going to be meeting at the uh, Baptist Church on the Deer Ridge Road at 1130 the parade starts at 12 uh, Ridge Creek will be Monday uh, December the 5th at going to meet at Heritage Hall at 630 and then at 7 o'clock is when the parade is on that and then the Peterstown parade is on uh, Tuesday at 630 uh, is where we'll be at uh, the Dalton Law Office and 7 is when the parade starts on that. And if you have any questions, see Craig on that. Uh, like I said, they, but they were stuffing about 1,500 bags so that we can uh, go and give out the, the tracks and the candy and stuff to everybody in the parade. So those are the times on that there. So I think that's all the announcements I have this time to get the men to come and uh, we'll take up the evening offering. Shake hands first. Oh, yeah, I forgot to shake hands and then the bottom, you know. <laughs> you can leave it to me to get it messed up somehow. I thought, man, I knew all that. And then I go, we can, everybody wants to stand, we'll shake hands, and then we'll do the office. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
take our Bible this evening. Let's go ahead. We'll turn to First Kings to start off with tonight. First Kings chapter eighteen. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at a few different portions of Scripture this evening. So we'll start off in 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to start in uh, verse 17 tonight. The question I have for you tonight is, is God real? Now, I know that's a ridiculous question here. I can imagine what you're thinking now is, listen, Brother Dan, we're not only Sunday morning though. We're not only Sunday evening goers. We are the Wednesday night crowd. That means we are. The, we know God is real. I know, I know, I know. So bear with me here. To me, it just sounded nice as a title, okay? Uh, but is God real? And if you bear with me as we go through this tonight, there are a few things I think we're going to point out. Actually, there's, specifically, there's four that we're going to point out of where we go from. That understanding of what, that, that, that questioning of is God real to knowing God is real and how that affects us. Each step actually affects us as Christians. Each step actually affects us as a church. And we're going to look at that a little tonight. So if you found your place in 1 Kings, 1 Kings, I hope I said that correctly. I almost said Corinthians, so I hope I said 1 Kings earlier. 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going to start in verse 17, and I'm going to read down all the way to verse 39. So follow along with me. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubled Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send it and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves, four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel to gather, and to be in gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came and all the people, unto all the people, and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? And the Lord be God, follow him. But if, I'm sorry, if the Lord be God, follow him. And, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And I know Brother uh, Jared, he preached on this Sunday night. And it was a good message, and I'm not going to on, touch on that when we continue reading here. Um, but it, was, it is interesting, as he pointed out Sunday night, they didn't even answer him, not even a word. They didn't even answer him. Verse 22, Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. Which is interesting here, once again. They couldn't say a word to him earlier when he challenged them. But now when he gives a proposition of how to settle this, then they answer. A little curiosity there. I thought it was interesting. Verse 25. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first. And ye uh, are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock, and it was, which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon... That Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or preadventure he sleepeth and must be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their after their manner with knives and lance 
until uh, the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when, mid, uh, when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any answer, nor any yeah. regard. Any, any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as uh, would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Which, can you imagine how much water that was? And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things, at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones in the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity. We have to be here tonight. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, I have to be able to be uh, behind this uh, pulpit, Lord, be able to be in your word and preach your word. God, I pray that you will be able to use me this evening. Speak through me, Lord. Let me just be a vessel of use. I ask you, Lord, to uh, bind, bind my words, Lord, and uh, let, just let your word be spoken through me, just to be able to use me, Lord, and put myself aside. Lord, I pray that here tonight we can look at get into your word, Lord, and, and uh, see, Lord, what we can do in knowing that you are God. We love you, Lord, and be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. So one thing, I always like to point out with this story, I feel like I cannot just not say it when we talk about this. When that fire fell from heaven, which is not really to my lesson, but I feel like I cannot mention it. When, fire, when that fire fell from heaven, I mean, can you imagine seeing that? Can you imagine how hot that fire was that it consumed the stones? I don't know about you, but I have a fire pit at home. It's got stones around it. It keeps the fire at bay. They get hot. They have never been consumed. Yeah. That always amazes me how hot that fire looks. And the Bible doesn't say, and within the next 48 hours, the stones were consumed. No, it happened. The fire came and it was consumed. It was then, it was within the evening sacrifice. <clears throat> it wasn't within the evening and then the next evening sacrifice. No, it was within that evening sacrifice. It all happened right then. The power of God. Now, like I said, I, I feel like I cannot mention that part. It just always interests me every time. But my first part I want to talk about tonight, my first point, of, is God real, is, if you notice, there was a confusion. There's a confused people. So many people in this world are confused and don't know what or who to believe in. Right. Yeah. They don't. They're confused. <clears throat> now, Part of this, I think there's three reasons why. And one reason is 
We have so many people, I believe, in this world that they have been shared the gospel. The gospel has been shared, and they, I believe they've even, some have even trusted the Lord. And then that's it. And then they're left. As babes in Christ defend for themselves. And the other thing is, someone teaches them. Someone eventually comes by and says, let me share this with you. Let me, let me share what this Book of Mormon says. Let me share with you what I have in this Awakening magazine. That's Jehovah's Witnesses, in case you didn't know. And see, what it is, is they were not taught, they, they weren't grounded in the things. And, you know, we're, we are commanded to do that. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 28, we, that is, we use as one of our great commission verses, that I know we all know at the end there, uh, verses 19 through 20, uh, 18 through 20, really, but 19, if we go, go to 19 and 20, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's talking about the gospel. That says, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And teach them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That's the discipling part. That part gets left out so much that we have so many times. I can, I can think back to one certain person I always think of is when I was in high school. I was, I was finishing up my last year of Bible college, and I was working at a dairy factory at the time. And he was one of the head maintenance guys, and their position came available, and I was interested in it. We were talking. And things, and I got a chance to talk to him about church, coming to church, and I had a chance to talk to him about salvation. I was able to share the gospel with him, and I believe he's saved. And I started talking about church. Oh, what kind of church do you go to? You go to a church or anything? Well, I go sometimes. Okay. Why have you ever? What church do you normally go to? And I can't remember specifically the name of the church that he mentioned. But the church he mentioned, I remember thinking, really? They don't even teach or preach what I just mentioned to you at all. But what I believe is someone led him to the Lord and praise the Lord for that. But then he was never grounded. <coughs> and someone eventually came along and was going to teach him something. But it wasn't from God's Word. So I believe uh, one reason why there's confusion is because babes in Christ are left mm -hmm. without any grounding, without any disciple, without any teaching of what the Bible says. Not opinions, but truly what the Bible says, truth. <clears throat> and, if we, if, and I think we all can uh, agree that the Bible tells us what happens when babes are left. We have uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Uh, the devil walks about the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Lions do not Go for the alpha. They do not go for the strong. They do not. They go for the sick, sick and the weak. Babes are pretty weak. I promise you. I think. I think Titus can beat Charlotte in arm wrestling match. It's just babes are weak. I'm sure she can hold her own to some degree, but babes are weak. It's just a natural thing. So when we babes in Christ, we are leaving them for someone to come and teach. For someone to guide them incorrectly. Secondly, the second reason why is I think there's a lot of confusion because Christians, we have not done our part and shared the gospel, shared the truth. You know, I was a, I was probably a month or two ago now. There's a preacher, his name is Dr. R.B. Ouellette. You ever heard of him before? He's a good preacher. I enjoy it. I enjoy his preaching. But I was listening to his message of his, and he mentioned this in his message. He said, and it was an from this year, and he said that he was preaching at a church, and he was preaching about soul winning. It was like a soul winning type of conference they had him in for. And he was preaching on soul winning, about going out and sharing the gospel. And while he was preaching, he, he, had, he did a study, and he said, he, uh, a study for Christianity, for Christians in America. Do you know over half of the Christians in America believe it's wrong to go to somebody else 
and just help them give the gospel. Not because they think they, it's not needed. Not because they themselves think it's wrong. They think it's too imposing on somebody else. Mm. That's the thought process that we, as Christians, that we've gone into. But you know what? I don't think someone mind me maybe uh, disturbing them for a minute. When I can share with them an eternity difference for their life. Yeah. So see, first we have leave babes alone. Secondly, we leave. Well, I think that some of us, some of the Christians, we're just not doing our part. We have forgotten the soul winning aspect. It's great art. Uh, it's great to have a church that you come to and you get fed. <coughs> but what are we doing if we're not going out and sharing? Well, God shared with us. Thirdly, under the first point here, I think sometimes with confusion, truth was shared, but only in words, <clears throat> not in actions. In other words, when you're, at, you're with that person at work and, you, and the Lord gives you the opportunity to share the gospel with them, you share the gospel with them, and they hear what you're saying. We have to see you at work. And they're like, well, he said this. So why is he doing this? See, we share truth, but we're not living with the truth. If you want to give someone some confusion, I don't know about you, but I know for myself, if I, if I heard someone say one thing, and I see them do the opposite, or I see them do another, I'm going to be a little confused. <laughs> I'm going to have the genuine, genuine question of, what did they mean what they said? I'm going to have the genuine question of, well, he said that, but he said this. And he told me how he believes this, what he told me. But yet he still acts like this. I'm confused on how we're different. I'm confused on what he actually has that I don't. So we see here in 1 Corinthians, I think there's a confusion. I mean, there has to be some type of confusion. Now, I believe with this, in this portion of Scripture, yes, they, I believe they rejected God. Okay, and they did. They rejected God. But I think some people were actually confused. Because not only was there a rejection of God, but I would say the quote-unquote followers... Someone started it. They rejected God. But then, you know, Israelites come. They got some followers with them, and they were confused. Can you imagine being so confused? And these, you know, these people, the prophets, the prophets of Baal here, they were so sure that Baal was God. Yeah. I mean, they, were, they, they were giving their lives to it. They were jumping on this altar. They were hollering. They were screaming. They, they, were, they were cutting themselves. The Bible says the, the point where blood was gushing out. You know, for blood to really be gushing out, you've got to hit something pretty important. You, if you cut yourself, yeah, it'll bleed. But to get something gushing out, you got to hit something that, ooh, you got to stop that. They were given they were, they were, they were giving their all to this. To something. And that's how much they believe in it. <clears throat> and I believe it's because there was so much confusion. See, they were not getting grounded. They were not understanding who God really was. Now, if we may not have exactly that in today's time. We don't have people maybe about to jump, jump around an altar and cutting themselves. Maybe we do. I don't know. But we may not see it as we're not seeing it all the time. But I think there's different things we see. Of confusion. Just like Pastor said on Sunday morning. Well, Jesus, he we don't believe he's actually really the Son of God. We believe he's the brother of Satan. Which is the belief of uh, Mormons. 
by my sins. It's confusion. Now, secondly, we see here, you take your Bibles to go to 2 Kings with me. 2 Kings chapter 1. I'll try to move along quickly here. 2 Kings chapter 1, we begin reading in verse 1. We see the seekers. So we have the confused, and then we also have the seekers. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 1, and I'm going to read 12 verses, the first 12 verses, it says that Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab and Ahab, Ahab, oh boy, every time, Ahaziah, well, well, our own God. Yeah, exactly, yeah, thank you, you, know, you practice the you practice name so many times and you, you, have to do it and you still can't say it right, but he fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick, and he sent messengers and said unto them, go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. Whether I shall recover of this disease. So first off, I want to point out here, he is seeking. Right? We would say he is seeking for truth. He is seeking for something. He wants to be. He wants someone. He wants a, 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 a spiritual, some type of spiritual guidance, letting him know of what's actually going to happen to him. Is he going to be able to recover from what he has, or is he not? Then the, uh, verse 3, and then the angel of the Lord sent, unto, uh, sent to Elijah the Tishabite, Arise, go up and meet the messenger of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. Now, the messenger, he goes back, and guess what? He tells the king this. He's not satisfied with that answer. So now, he was seeking for spiritual guidance and truth. He got it. But now, he's not going to take it. And that, that, that can't be right. Let's go ahead and let's skip down. Uh, so let's go ahead and skip down to verse 9 then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50 and he sent and he, me, and he went up to him and behold he sat on top of the hill this talk about Elijah sitting on top of the hill and he spake unto him thou man of God the king hath said come down so now the king he's he, he's on he's on he don't want to hear this from, from, from the horse's mouth. He's wanting to hear this from the man because he doesn't believe it. And Elijah answered and said unto the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Again also he sent unto him another captain of 50 with his 50. And he and he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Secondly, secondly we see here, we have seekers. They seek for more than what the truth is. They believe there is more to it. Have you ever met someone you won't give the opportunity to share the gospel with them and you share the gospel with them and they and ask, well, what do I need to do? Well, I've never been a person just to, I can't just, I, I, I was raised differently, I, I can't just accept something, I need, I need to do something for it. And I've, I've had people tell me that about the gospel. But it's a gift. They can't, they, there's nothing you can do for it. Some seek because they want to know the truth. Just like the king did. He wanted to know the truth. He had a desire. That's why he started off. Some seek because they don't agree with the truth. 
And I think we see that there too. I don't know about you, but have you ever talked to Edwin? I'm not sure, maybe you've even talked to Pastor Wall. And if it maybe had a moment of counseling or something in your life, and he's, he's told you what the Bible says on it. And you walk away and you think, that just can't be right. And you go and you go and you try all these different things. And something in your life falls apart again. You go back to the pastor and he says, well, did you, did you do what I said that the Bible said to do last time? Well, you know, I just thought maybe there was a different way. That's exactly the same concept here. Some seek because they don't agree with the truth. Sometimes truth is hard to swallow. It is. It really is. It's hard sometimes. But truth is always true. It's absolute. Thirdly, we see some seek because the truth just isn't good enough. So it's really what they don't want it to be. So we see that in our seekers. So we have, we have the confused, we have the seekers. And now this is all of, is God real? You have some that are confused, don't understand if God's real or not, or who's believing or what's believing. You have the seekers that they're not sure if God's real, and they want to know. And there are some that they want to know, and they find out the truth of it, and they just don't want to accept it. Thirdly, we see here the doubter. In your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 14. Look at verse 22 with me. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. The Bible says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get him into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up unto the mountain apart to pray. And when he, the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was not in the midst of the sea. The ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. It was contrary. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come un unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. <clears throat> but when he saw the wind boisterous and, uh, boisterous, and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We have the doubters. These, I believe, are saved Christians. Christians that have faith or in the good times, but doubt in the hard times when things get rough. Now, I'm, I'm here telling you, by the way, tonight, these, I'm not, I have not mastered these things. I have doubted many times. <clears throat> but you know, when we as Christians doubt our Lord, realistically, what we are saying is, my God's not big enough, He's not able. We belittle him. And since we don't believe he is God, we don't believe he's all powerful, we don't believe he's all knowing. Like he says he is. This is a hard one. I think it's a hard one. I know it's a hard one for me. Because you know, when times get tough. You can't, things just don't make sense. It is easy to doubt. 
it is easy to want to go back and rely on our understanding. To rely on what we know is best. <clears throat> when I worked, uh, when I was in college, my second year of college, I worked at a restaurant in Amish country. It's called Amish Door Restaurant. And I worked there, and I remember uh, I had some money saved up, and I had um, purchased an engagement ring. Guess who? Right? Uh, I purchased an engagement ring from Beth. Of course, they didn't have time. And I, I had enough, just basically, I had almost all of it down on paid for it, but I had one payment I had to make afterwards in order to, in order to get it paid for it full. So I remember I was working one night. I know I paid my tithe, I paid the bills that I had. And I remember thinking, what am I going to do? The bill, I think, was like $150. And I had half of it. And it was due the next day for me to get it out. Well, I, I needed the next day because in the next two days, which they were closing the day after that, I was going to close. I had it all planned out. So I needed it then. And I remember I prayed to the Lord many times before this, and I remember especially that night on the way to work. I'm driving down. Oh, Lord, please give me good tips tonight. Lord, I am $70 short. I need that $70. Now, mind you, I'm only working a four-hour shift, but most of the time, it's just pretty good. But we had a cold November. <clears throat> and most of the time, the fall season was a good season, but when winter hit, <clears throat> breaks all, it, it's done. Most of the time, they sent you home early. There wasn't enough tables to wait on. And it was a cold November. Snow was already on the ground. All the leaves were gone. And I remember thinking, to myself, Lord, I need that $70. And I remember I waited tables. And we actually had, we were pretty busy that night. We were waiting on tables, waiting on tables, waiting on tables. And we were five minutes before close. Before we shut the doors, then we cleaned up, our, cleaned up all the stuff uh, that we had out. And I remember I went to the bathroom real fast, got my apron, and took out my money. No, count. $55. I remember thinking, you got to be kidding me. And I was mad. I was. I was upset with the Lord. Because in my mind, I had full faith and confidence that He was going to do it. I, I didn't even doubt that there was not going to be $70 there. I was, I was so excited I was counting it. And when it came to $55, I remember thinking, well, you didn't work your head for it. I was upset. And I doubted the Lord. But you know what? I came out of that bathroom after counting my tips there. And we had five minutes to close. And guess who got sat at table? I did. And I remember thinking, well, maybe Lord, you'll come through. But now I wasn't too confident. I was still doubting. And they really went down there when they ordered a cup of soup. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. Two dollar tip. <laughs> so I'm thinking of that. I'm like, yeah, you bought a six dollar cup of soup. I'm not expecting much on a tip. That lady left me a fifty dollar tip on a six dollar cup of soup. I can still, I can still remember how I felt because sure enough, it, she didn't get it in cash; it was on the card, so I didn't even get to see it until after. Uh, I cleaned up and everything. And I remember I went to the front and I already knew what a couple of the ones I had on the card. Well, all the ones really up till then. I just figured she left out a tip. I mean, it was six dollars super. I don't blame her. I mean, I mean, I was upset, but I understood the kind of concept. But I remember I went to, you would go to the register and they would give you money back. And I got that money and I remember I had to double check to make sure. Are you, are you sure the fifty belongs with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at my receipt, the, the receipt of what my tips were. Sure enough, I remember I got that cash, put it in my little apron that you know, we wore. I went out to my truck and I bawled like a baby because mm -hmm. I remember thinking, "Oh God, I am so sorry." 
Why did I not think that you could not provide me with seven dollars? When you've done so much already. You know, cattle on a thousand hills. But I couldn't trust you for seventy dollars. I remember driving home. Quit my bubble of blood running and I started driving home. Then it hit me again. Oh God, I'm sorry. Grab like this. I was ashamed. Because I doubted. And what I said here, that's how I felt. I felt that in a sense, when I did when I doubted him, I did not believe that he was God. Because I didn't have the faith to believe what he could do for me. When he told me he was going to do something. I didn't believe he was all powerful. I didn't believe he was all knowing. I didn't believe that he was able to provide for me. I doubted. And I know I'm getting real, there's like two minutes left. I'll, I'll finish him. There's a songwriter. He wrote a song. Didn't I walk on the water? I'm not sure if you know it or not. I'll read the first verse of the chorus to you. It says, As I kneel in the darkness in the middle of the night, praying for assurance everything's going to be all right. Lord, I see another battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I'll go down in defeat. And he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Just take a look behind you and see how far you come. And every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I wouldn't see you through? Didn't I walk on the water? Didn't I calm the raging sea? I spoke to the wind, and it hushed and gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I walked right beside you so you wouldn't fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven just to die for your sins? I searched until I found you, and I do it all again. Amen. We find ourselves in those hard times. And it's, it's easy now. We know God, He's done it time and time and time again. That battle you're going through, I'm not saying it's not a big battle to you, but I'm saying it's small and God. Because my God's a big God. Man. He can take care of that huge battle in front of you, and He can take care of the, something small as asking the Lord to help you find your keys. Because he cares about it. And he can do it. We have no reason to doubt because he's always there. And lastly, we have so we have the confused. We have the secrets. We have the doubters. And now we have the knowers. We see this in all of those portions of scripture. Because you know what? These doubt these knowers, this is Elijah when that fire came down from heaven. This is Daniel in the den of lions. This is David when he was running to Goliath. This was Paul and Silas when they were singing when they were thrown into prison. This was Moses when he parted the Red Sea. This was Esther when she stood before the king for the Jewish people. They were not perfect. They didn't do everything right. But they had faith in who God was. And they knew who God was. He was real their life, and he showed himself real in theirs. Is God real? Where is he in your life? I know he's there. You're safe today. He's there. But do you let him be God in your life? Do you have faith in him to provide your needs, save your marriage, give you boldness, save your family? So I know we start off the service. I know it was kind of a rhetorical question. Is God real? I know we'd all say yes. God is real. And I know we all know that. But now in your life, do you show that he's real? Is God real to you? Let's all stand in prayer. Have a word of prayer and a little time of invitation. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you. This evening, we thank you, Lord. There's so many things, Lord, you do for us. Lord, we have no reason to doubt. 
Lord, we have no reason to be confused. We know you, but you tell us in your word you're not the author of confusion. And Lord, if we seek you, you'll give us the truth. Lord, I pray here tonight that I know we all know in our head, Lord, you all know you are God. But Lord, I pray that we all have it settled in our lives. That every step in our lives, we know who you are and we let yourself show in our lives. I pray we're able to do that. I ask you to be with us here tonight, Lord. Do this time of invitation. In Jesus' name. We have a song of invitation. 353. Hymn number 353, if you like to sing. And the altar is open. Hymn 353.